All right, everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and we have a harsh opinions for you guys today. We're going to be talking about every single Galactic Legend, so the seven harsh opinions are about the Galactic Legends inside a Galaxy of Heroes. Let's dive right into our video, and let's start bashing the Galactic Legends. We're going to start it off with Galactic Legends Rey. My biggest thing with Rey, as you guys know, is that there's no direct path to her. Like, I think she's a fantastic Galactic Legend. I love Rey. She's definitely dependent upon Ben in the end game. That is one thing I do want to make very clear. Like early game, if you get her in the mid game, it's still a problem for a lot of players. But in the end game, if you don't have Ben, it's just, it's a lot easier to deal with her. So it's kind of one of those situations where at the time that she stops becoming a problem without Ben, you should have Ben anyway. But there's no direct path to her. Nothing leads you into resistance. It doesn't get you enough of her requirements by doing other things. So I think a lot of players, you have to be really intentional about farming Ray. That it's not something like the example I always use is Sith Eternal. That you could go and get Executor, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, Lord Vader, and even uh, like Jedi Knight Luke and Jabba, JML. You could get those things. And then you'd have a bunch of the requirements for Sith Eternal already completed because of doing those other farms. So it's a situation with her where there's just nothing that really leads you to her. So it's, it's my biggest gripe. I, I think she's a fantastic character, especially with Ben Solo, but there's no direct path and that makes it really hard to figure out when to farm her because you're not really helping yourself in any other way. And that's just the biggest thing, guys. They, you know, this game is all about being as smart with your resources as possible. And so what's smarter, investing in one character for one specific purpose or investing in a character that can unlock three or four different doors down the road. Just, again, you've got to look at it from a much, you got to think about it not just in the now, but in the future as well of how that's going to, you know, what return on investment are you getting from your gear. All right, Sith Eternals next, and oh, it's, it just makes me laugh and cry. Um, he was the king of this game. Absolute was the king of this game before Jedi Master Kenobi. By plugging in a few characters, you could beat any team in the game. That's how good he was. And it's just gone downhill since. He really struggles against some of the top-tier Galactic Legends. He always needs a babysitter, whether it's Wat Tambor, Armor, or both of them. Uh, Pre-taunts, he just... It, it's unfortunate. He really needs not just a lifter. He needs a complete, almost, overhaul. The biggest thing I love about Sith Eternal, his requirements are all are pretty decent. And they... they his requirements have very good value in the long run as well. It's just his performance himself is not that good. And it keeps me from recommending him early because you're not going to get as much out of him. And it's not just like he's not good in like a PVP standpoint. He's not really that great in territory battles. He's not really that great in conquest. It's it's unfortunate, but it's truthful. It's hurt. It hurts. And it just makes me cry tears of sadness because, you know, he's someone that... You really like it's he's so easy to get and it's so accessible, but he himself is lackluster, and so that's why, guys. It's it's just you know, you're laughing and crying at the same time because it's it's almost like pathetic of how you know bad he can be at times, and at other times he can be amazing, right? Like I've done some amazing things with Seth Eternal, and at other times it's just underwhelming. Alright, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is next, and for him, he's just a glass I call him a glass cannon. He doesn't have a ton of survivability. He really doesn't. I, I, you know, I get like, oh, you could throw extra relic levels on him and make him more survivable. But he doesn't even have like the armor or anything else like that. He just, he, he's very, very easy to, like, that's one of the reasons why that Jedi Knight loot counter is so good. Is that it's just, it's very easy to take him out. It's not, you know, he's one of those GLs that the survivability is not there. So, you know, one good hit can ruin your Kylo. And I think for me, that's a big problem because a lot of times Kylo, his whole team will die and then it's just him. So if you lose your tanks, you know, you lose the other characters in your squad and it's just him, he's in for it rough. Like you really, really need to have that survivability. And that's why so many people Relic 8, Relic 9, Kylo. But if you Relic 8, Relic 9, your other Galactic Legends, you're kind of at that same point of he's, you know, the survivability he's gaining is just, I don't know, it's not enough in my opinion. It's the one thing that I think his biggest flaw is he doesn't have a ton of survivability. And the other thing that could help is if he had more health steal. At times, he doesn't have enough health steal that 
you could deal, you know, 200,000 damage and he's going to get like 20k health from that. And it just, that can be really, really brutal. Because he doesn't have that survivability of protection recovery like so many of the other Galactic Legends do. The, once you get through his protection, it's not coming back. He doesn't have a way to regenerate that on his own. And that, I think, is, you know, that big problem. He's just, he's a glass cannon, unfortunately. And not to say he's not a great GL. I do a lot of amazing things with my Kylo. But he doesn't have that top-tier survivability. All right, next we have Jedi Master Luke. And I've called him a defensive liability. And I want to explain why I say that. Jedi Master Luke's on defense are basically food for Sith Eternal. Right? That is like Sith Eternal plus Wat Tambor is going to eat a Jedi Master Luke for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on defense. I'm going to say 99% of the time. You know, the, the 1% is when they have completely out relic out-modded you, and they could maybe take you out. But really, you bring Watt, you put armor in there, you bring Watt, you bring Sith Eternal, you even throw in a pre-taunt tank if you had to. They're not going to, they just, it's, you know, he's a defensive liability in that regard. The other thing is that without someone like a Jedi Knight Revan or Barriss Offee, he can melt to things like Maul Mandalorians, Starkiller teams. It just it can go downhill really, really quickly for him. And like I really do like my Sith, like I really do love Jedi Master Luke. Just I think defensively he can be a liability that I don't always think people recognize that. You know, that we see we see him and we're like, oh, we're just gonna use Sith Eternal, but you think about how players use Sith Eternal, and if I get to use my Sith Eternal versus a Jedi Master Luke instead of Malgus, like, that's a win for me, right? Like, that's I'm, I'm trading, you know, equal places at that point. I don't know. That's just my reasoning behind it. I think he's a defensive liability. I do love Luke. I think Luke's probably one of my favorite Galactic Legends to use. I think he's one of the most underrated and undervalued GLs, but he is definitely a defensive liability. At this moment, we must pay homage to our king, Wampa. You guys know the drill. Wampa wants Relic 8. Guys, we are at 4,600 subscribers. If you want to hit 5K this month, smash that subscribe button. Leave likes. Leave comments. When we hit 5K, we're going to hold a special live stream, and Wampa will, bit, will hit Relic 8 on that live stream, guys. Let's get it. Wampa, he's not a galactic legend in this game, but he is a galactic legend in our hearts, and he is king. All right, let's keep on going here. We've got Lord Vader next. And I almost gave him and Jedi Master Luke, like, switch them. But at least with Lord Vader, he does have some. Like, he'll get more holds on defense than I would say a Jedi Master Luke would. Because I think a lot of players, if you don't have the counters for him, he's probably going to stop you or you're going to use a GL. The thing with Lord Vader that I don't like is there's some cheap counters. There are some very cheap counters to Lord Vader, right? If you... You can make Imperial Troopers without Datacrons work against the Lord Vader. You can use your Bounty Hunters against Lord Vader in Territory Wars. Dad Bod Boba takes him out. So there's a couple of cheap counters to Lord Vader. And in my opinion, that definitely lowers his viability because you place him on defense and you're just worried that your opponent's going to use their Bounty Hunters and destroy you. And that can be a big problem. Like, that can be a really big problem for you and for the game, um... I do like my Lord Vader. I love using him offensively. I think on offense, he really shines because there's just a wide variety of teams you can take out with him. And he always gets love with Datacrons. There's always a, somehow a Datacron that helps him. So I think offensively is the best way to use him. There's just some really cheap counters to use against Lord Vader that I think make him, make putting him on defense at times very, very risky. When they do get holds though, do, you guys have watched me fail multiple times. Like, they will get holds and that's a win, right? That, that's He's doing his job. Jedi Master Kenobi, there's not a lot I can say, right? There's not a lot wrong with his kit. They've tweaked it so much. They've made it so ridiculously good. I would say the two things, I the first one is like, you no cat, no party. If you don't have Commander Tano uh, and you place your Jedi Master Kenobi on defense, I'm bringing my General Skywalker 501st and laughing away as I, you know, beat you. Like that's just, that is facts. Like I will, I will laugh as I do that battle. Um... So no cat, no party. The other thing I'll say is that on defense, this team is very predictable. That you know the way the AI is going to play early on, right? That you, you almost know what the AI is going to do. And that can really benefit you. That you can kind of figure out, like, as long as you keep Kenobi under check, you target the right people, you're going to beat this team perfectly fine. And it's something like with Jedi Master Luke, I, you know, my success rate with this has been really, really good. It's not often that I lose that battle really ever. 
And I don't know. I just, to me, it's such an, he's such an easy thing to kind of memorize defensively that I'm not saying he's not good. It's just my one gripe is that he needs Commander Tano. And once you figure out how to beat him on, you know, defense, it just gets easier and easier that you, you know, you learn then the RNG and how to come, overcome it. It just, I think it's one of those battles that it's a, there's a lot more memorization with this battle. There's not as much RNG involved with beating a Kenobi. And then Jabba the Hutt is last. And uh, the, the title here, Embo, his lifter. Um, what, I, what I've noticed about the Jabba's I've faced is when he doesn't have Embo, he definitely loses some steps in terms of how good he is. I really think without Embo, it's not that he's not good, but he loses a step. Embo's there for the buff dispel, which against so many of the Galactic Legends is so important against so many teams. You know, I think Embo adds that layer of just, you know, it's annoying, right? He's going to dispel that tenacity up on, Gal on like a Jedi Master Kenobi. He's going to dispel taunts. He's going to, it, it really adds a layer of complexity. And the reason why I call out Embo is because Embo's not one of the requirements for Jabba. So you do have to kind of go, if you don't have Lord Vader, you do have to go build Embo, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But, you know, Embo's kind of one of those characters that, you know, it's kind of a meme for some people, but he really is almost a lifter unit for Jabba because I can 100% tell you that if I see Boba Fett or another character in that Jabba team instead of Embo, I'm licking my chops. That gets infinitely easier for me. So that's the list, guys. Those are the, my harsh opinions about Galactic Legends. Again, these are all fantastic characters. They're all going to make your roster better. Even one like Sith Eternal will make your roster better. They aren't all created equal. We know that. But I wanted to get this out there. I want to see what you guys think. Smash that subscribe button. Leave likes. Leave comments. Again, guys, we want to hit 5,000 because Wampa is king. I love all you. May the force be with you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.